All right. What's up, guys? Welcome. Good morning. Welcome to another edition of Movers and Shakers Unlimited. I'm your host, Brandon Troy. And for uh, this episode, we will be doing the first of our many uh, special edition episodes today, the second day of uh, Comic-Con at Home for Brandon's SDCC peeps, my SDCC peeps. Um, but without further ado, let me introduce each of our guests. Give me one moment. First on tap, we have Adrian Nash. What's going on, Adrian? Hey, how are you? I'm good. Yay, Comic Con, sort of. <laughs> and Hello. let me bring on our next guest. Give us one second. Also have Emily Whitten. What's going on, Em? Good. Uh, everything's good, and I'm happy to be here. Excellent, excellent. Uh, so, for, for those of you that have been watching many of these episodes, I'm not going to go into the whole spiel, but as you know, um, SD, the purpose behind SDCC Peeps is just the idea that with, uh, with Comic-Con, there's outside of the announcements that come out of it, outside of uh, the various things that you can collect there, one awesome aspect that I feel doesn't get enough credit is the idea of the terrific friendships. And let's be honest, the, the, I always coin it the con family that you have that you develop over uh, your time of uh, going there. Um, so with all of that in mind, uh, let me give you a quick rundown of the two guests that I have here. Um, Adrian, who is uh, the founder of uh, Pop Culture Squad and, and M down here uh she's a freelancer not just with pop culture squad not only with us with uh comic mix and much much more which we will get into uh but the i'm, I'm trying to think when we all met this was back in 20 was it 2015 20 yeah 2016 16 16, 16, yeah. I think. 16. Yeah. yeah yeah so uh 2016 um and it was at a Comic-Con party. Uh, I, I actually <laughs> uh, bring this up only because I feel that we could, I could dedicate an entire episode to the whole like Comic-Con nightlife uh, component. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, we absolutely. Sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but with that in mind, the thing that's funny about that year is I had been going to Comic-Con for I guess five or six years at that point, but that was the first time that I really made the effort to, you know, check out what uh, what Comic Con really had to offer in terms of uh, its, you know, nightlife, its parties, its events that are post show. And the only reason being is for those of you that are veteran uh, Comic Con attendees out there, you know that when it comes to this show, there's so much going on that by the time the whole day is all said and done you don't really want to do anything <laughs> afterwards. You just want to go to sleep and, and get ready, prepare for the next day. Uh, but uh, be that as it may, as, as someone who has not only been fortunate enough to do the attendee aspect of the first couple of years, but now be on the media port uh, side of it, let's just be honest, you know, as hard as you work throughout the day and the ripping and running that you're doing throughout the day, you just need some time to, to cut loose and just to, you know, unwind and, and, you know, enjoy yourself. So that was perhaps one of the first years that while I had gone to events afterwards, it was always as a, uh, as an addition to, you know, an event that I had already covered where perhaps they had an after party, like afterwards, or they had some type of special event afterwards, but I actually took the initiative that year to look for everything outside of uh outside of the commitments that i had as a as a media person to see what what i had to offer but uh oh bring it over to you guys um well, and, and look at the awesome party that we met at yeah, yeah. it was fun it was crazy <laughs> yeah but though those of you that are not familiar uh it's actually been it was the uh, nylon party for those of you that are uh, that don't know the party that we're talking about. It's held at Omnia. At the Omnia. Omnia yeah. um, and the thing that's cool is that 
it has it has been an ongoing party you know year after year that uh that is you know consistently um pretty pretty great uh the only other one that i can think of that's probably on par with that is uh what is it the nat geo party um, oh the nat geo yeah. party is so much fun yeah they're normally yeah, pretty party so much fun the nerd night party but yeah. but it's, it's really funny because that night that night where we all met i remember that they there were a couple of things that were memorable outside of you know obviously you guys uh, there was an impromptu DMX performance that that Which just we missed. I we missed it. We were upstairs. We were yeah. upstairs. We didn't even know what was happening. I yeah, thought we were kidding when we said, "Hey, I'm going to go watch DMX." <laughs> I mean, we had a good time in our space, but you had gone downstairs, and we were, and then you came back at some point, or we saw you downstairs, and you were like, "Oh yeah, DMX," and we were like, "Oh, okay, <laughs> what?" <laughs> but but no, the other crazy thing is there was because I do remember that night. There was a, I guess they had like a, a photo booth or all these, um, they had like this photo booth where you could take a picture of uh, in like incognito costumes. Oh, like a or like thing. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what came, became of that. Like I, it was yeah. supposed to, like I could have sworn that we emailed the two ourselves. They never sent the picture. They never sent the I was like our memory of, of meeting it, that, it that night. But Brandon, it's so funny because Adrian, when did we meet? I don't even remember. Was it like 2012 or something? Uh, I, it was somewhere like, around there. Yeah. Yeah. I started it was Baltimore. In like 2012. So it might have been before 2012 because I met Mike Gold before I started writing with Comic Mix. Um, so it might have been a con before that. But yeah, we like to go around to the parties together. Cause yes. And, and also for years we were roommates at cons. Oh too. yes, so we were and especially when we were working together. So many years of roommatiness, and um, oh, including the year where we decided it was going to be the con where we kind of took it easy every morning, and we slept <laughs> in and we ordered room service. Those doing us for good. We're like, look, there's a there's a party going on downstairs on the patio outside our building. We'll just look at it and be like, mm, breakfast, yeah. yeah, at like one o'clock. <laughs> I don't know. It was a it, because we were we were doing a lot, so like we were really yeah. tired every day, <laughs> but um. It's funny because Brandon, you talk about like, you know, are oh, you doing your all your all your stuff during the day? And then by the night, it's kind of like, okay, I'm I'm so tired. I was doing interviews during the day as well, of course, for comic mix and, and panel coverage or whatever. But at some point, I, you know, you get enough of these invites and you're like, okay. And at some point I started writing a party roundup, which was like, okay, well, this is part of the con too. You should cover it. It is. And uh I I actually should have, I did get to the parties last year and I didn't get to my party roundup um, because I, I've been writing a graphic novel series, but, um, and things get busy, but I actually ended up going to the entertainment weekly party last year, which was oh, you like, you know, one of those super like, Oh, everybody wants to go to it and everything. And I ended up tagging along as a plus one and it was super fun. Um, <clears throat> but every year there've been different parties like Nat Geo is always good, but Nickelodeon did the most amazing party one year with a full Double Dare obstacle course, like a mini Double Dare course. And everything was like mini burgers and fries and shakes and like all the, you know, uh, appetizers and whatever. And uh, voice actor Greg Sipes was one of the contestants in the Double Dare. And I remember I was, I was uh, watching him compete next to his parents who were there. <laughs> It was just the craziest experience. And then at the end of the night, they just open up the dance floor. And we're all dancing, you know, like it was just crazy. So the parties can vary so much. The next I have a Nickelodeon party story. Because remember the year we crashed the Nickelodeon party? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and met Sean Astin? Yes, yes, yes. So, I mean, well, and we, I, I, I'd met Sean before because of Discworld things, because he's a, a Discworld fan and then was in the movie The Color of Magic as one of the two main characters. Um, so he was, he was two flower in the, or um, yeah, he was two flower in the, in the movie. Um, but uh, a friend of ours had invited us to a private party in the Hard Rock, and it then there was like little cell service or he was busy i think he was busy because remember adrian when we got there he was making everyone margaritas yeah those are good in margaritas the hotel, in the hotel room so like he was probably busy with the host duties so he said come on over and then we got there and we were kind of waiting at the hard rock 
entrance because you have to have someone come and get you if you're not like on a list for a for a public party. So the, the uh, eventually they just let us in because we looked harmless. <laughs> yeah, they just waved us in and like pointed. Like, they were like they like assumed whatever party we were going to and just sent us to a floor. Yeah, they, were, like... no, they, they 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 had <laughs> like uh yeah we I asked I you know because my friend is a voice actor and I said. I said, um, what, what parties are, are going on tonight? And they said like, oh, Nickelodeon's going on and something else. And we were, I was like, oh, Nickelodeon, he works for Nickelodeon. You know, he does a lot of work for them. Maybe, maybe it's there. And so we went to the Nickelodeon party and it was winding down. So like they had a dog at the door, like a bulldog who was like the door guard <laughs> with, the guy, with the guy there. And he was just like, oh yeah, go on. <laughs> So we're there and it's all like turtles themed and Sean Astin was on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles at the time. Sean Astin was like oh, making there. drinks. Oh, hi. What's that? Sean Astin was like making the drinks. Well, no, no, no. That was at the part, the, the private party. No, at the Nickelodeon party. Sean oh, yeah. Astin got me my drink. <laughs> I just, you know, I remember chatting with him and his daughter was there and it was great to see yeah. him for kind of a while. And it was kind of just winding down. So we chilled there because I, we were still waiting to hear from my friend. And then right when it was like really closing up, he was like, oh, I'll come get you. And we had to meet him at a specific elevator. It was all very like, uh, like, you know, James James Rod, like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a puzzle. It's like, you know what it is? Like reverse escape room. It was really nice to be in that party. But it's, um, yeah, there was like a rad party happening at Nobu that we we're like, that's definitely not it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. But but it was, uh, it's you know, some of the good parties are also just hanging out with your friends. Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, which is what this is too. But um, but yeah, that was a crazy time. And there, I was just talking yesterday with another friend who, um, when I went to the American Gods party when that was just coming out or had just started. Um, I had, I had ended up, uh, it's, it's, I don't know if that's what we're talking about. It's a long story, but it's like, okay. So it was like this thing where the only reason that like, I, I was, I knew bunches of people at the party and I had been invited to the party by one of the guests, but I wasn't on the main guest list. And so he, he was just like, come and come and tell them, you know, me and show up and whatever. So I did because why the heck not? Um, and I got to there and I was like, look, he texted me and all of this. And the woman at the door was like, and I had never even thought of this. And people don't try this because it's just lame. But she was like, well, you could have put anyone's name with that phone number and had them texting you a conversation. I was like, oh, I never thought of that. I guess <laughs> or normal or nice or whatever. I'm not that desperate to go to a party I'm not supposed to be at. But um then it turned out she recognized me and then I recognized her because she had been the person at the door of the activation I had gone to the day before, but she and I were both dressed up and she wasn't wearing her glasses. And she was like, wait, weren't, weren't you there yesterday? I was like, yes. And then she was like, oh, okay, go on. You know, like she knew who I was, so it was okay. But it was like this whole thing. Sometimes San Diego is frustrating in the sense that there's a lot going on and you're always fear fearing you're going to miss out, the FOMO thing. And then the parties can be confusing when it comes to getting in, even if you're supposed to be there. Yeah. <laughs> kind of crazy. So I've had mostly good experiences and some really stupid experiences trying to get into the party I'm on the list for and something happens, but... I, I pulled rank once at a party when IDW used to throw a big party because, you know, they're in San Diego. Right. And for some reason, they, they'd switched venues and they used to have it at this party. I remember there was like a staircase and I was just like, well, I'm going to fight it one of these days on this staircase going to or leaving this party. But this one year they had it in like a different place. And for some reason, like the public was allowed to go. So there was this huge, huge line. And this was when we were partnered publishing wise with IDW. So I'm like, and I'm standing there waiting online and waiting online and my date's like, aren't, isn't, aren't you like with this company? You shouldn't have to be like with these people just waiting, hoping you can get in. And I'm like, what? And he's like, go up front. And I was like, this is the most LA thing I've ever had to do in my life. I literally had to go up front and be like, look, this is my company. I work for these people. They put it, they publish my book. I should be up there. I'm with the band. <laughs> like really, and that's not me. <laughs> I, I, will, I will just stand outside if my name's on the list. I'll just be like, okay, it's not there. Okay. 
Meanwhile, I look for the short line at any party I go to because I'm like, that's the list I'm on. I'm not gonna wait in this other line. Well, there was only like one line. There was okay. there was no like sh there was no like right. Oh yeah, line. So, yeah. one I giant line where they don't have the separate lines. But because um, if you are press or a guest or whatever, it's normally like a separate line. They yeah. normally have a, a RSVP for your media line, and then. And yeah. then uh, RSVP for uh, 10Bs. I think this was probably but right yeah. on the cusp of like San Diego parties and San Diego getting really, really big with like the party and like everybody really cool. coming down to just yeah. like and go to parties figured, and being in San Diego. They figured out a system. And then in the last year or so, it seemed like the system got too crazy. Like there yeah. was a system that seemed to work. Because I remember uh, like two or three, maybe like three or so years ago, and this is why for, for anybody who, who is sad because they're not on that short list, A, I'm, I'm sorry, but also B, one night I had to cover and then write about six different parties. So you cannot wait in line for all of those if yeah. you're supposed to be at all of those and get to them. And I remember I went to like five of the six, I think it was, because you never end up at all of them because you cannot, you can't teleport you don't have a TARDIS, you know, it's, it's impossible. I can't it, tell There was one before. night that I managed to hit five or six. I do not recommend it for everybody. So I yeah. was wrecked the day. Yeah, I, I try now it's like two or three a night is the max and I might as well be at the one, but you can still cover a few over the course of the time. But that Definitely. was here. I did five or six. I'm so tired. It was fun, but it was like, Oh. Exhaust. What what you have to like map right. out how to get around the gas lamp from party to party because they're never near each other. It's like, oh, I got to go from here down to here, yeah. and this. It, it, thank God there's Uber. Yeah, yeah. And I there was yeah. one time I went to a nightmare party where they wouldn't let the press out of a terrible little like press pen even to go to the bathroom. That was terrible. We all wrote to them afterwards and we were like, fire your press person. Sorry, we never do this, but fire your press person. And. They, they wouldn't let you out to go and report on the, I'm like, look, I'm here to report on the party because they want you to see their red carpet line forever. And everybody was late and all of the celebrities take their time getting there and are stuck in crowds and are coming from their hotels after being like on stage all day. And we get it, you know, but they wouldn't let me out. And I'm like, look, I am going to either leave or go see the party. So, and th so I was the only one they let out of the pen because she was like, okay, fine, go. Cause I've been bugging her. Everybody else was just, like, a lot of people were just standing there. And I was like, I'm not, I had like three heels on. Cause I was going to Michael Davis's party after that. And that one was super fun. And he had the party, party is always amazing. I know. I, yeah, I wish, I, I wish the I miss his parties. I miss his yeah, dinner. As you can see guys, it is a saga. It can be, <laughs> they, they, there could be a whole episode dedicated to <laughs> so we so party, <laughs> right? With all the, the inner workings and the logistics that go into not only attending it or or getting on that exclusive list, all the various things that encompass it. Uh, all the emails that go on between us when we're like, so, you been invited to <laughs> So yeah. many things. Um, lots, of, lots of communications. But there's also the normal stuff that everybody can go to, like panels and stuff. <laughs> so. There's also plenty of parties that are just like, you know, like every bar is themed. Every hotel has like people in it, you can, the lobby bars are still some of the most fun times you'll have at a con. And I, that is 100% true. And Nerd HQ, when that was a thing, would do these giant parties that were for everybody. And then occasionally like Zach Levi and friends would come out and wave from their little area of kind of boxed offness, which I get. But they would also come down and dance in the crowd, which was crazy and respected. Like people didn't get in their faces too much. But those parties were great because they were thrown like the parties you have to be on a list for. But the list you had to be on was just registering. It wasn't you had you, you didn't have to be like somebody from a news outlet or a show or a thing. So I, I totally miss the Nerd HQ days because oh, those parties were always even if I had other stuff, I would be like, but I could always end the night or go there if it's if it's not happening over here, you know. So with that said, guys, with, with all these memories that we're talking about, not just with the nightlife stuff, but. Um, we touched a bit just now on some of the programming. Let's take the rewind the clock back. Take me to your first uh, Comic Con and that best memory from your first Comic Con. <laughs> I was twelve. 
<laughs> Let's not forget that I've been going to this convention since I was a kid. Right. <laughs> I wasn't even at the convention. I didn't exist. <laughs> like I've watched that convention set. I remember when they added Hall H. So, Crazy. Um, oh. yeah, I met Jack Kirby. Oh. So there, that's, awesome. that's, that's my my at my, my very first San Diego. My Jack Kirby. So yeah, I can't compete with that. Um, <laughs> I. I don't remember what like the first panel I went to was, but I would hazard a big old guess that it was probably voice actors doing cool voice <laughs> actor stuff because, well, first of all, you can get into those panels without waiting until everybody's dead in the hallway. You know, like you can get in, you still have to wait in the line, but it's like reasonable. They're in like, you know, one of the bigger break off rooms or occasionally I don't even know if they've ever gone to ballroom 20 for something outside of one of the show ones, but like, if it's just voice actors talking about voice acting, they'll do it in one of the smaller rooms and it's delightful. I love seeing them talk about their work and do the voices. And then if you can get to the ones where they read scripts in their voices, like they read a movie script, but in their characters. So I'm guessing that that was probably one of my first ones. I go to a lot of smaller uh, like comic people talking about comics ones because you don't have to wait to get in at all sometimes. You just go in and sit down. So it's nice to have a place to just sit down and listen to your people talk, you know. And you learn a lot about like editing and writing and working in the industry. And obviously, um, I, I actually, it wasn't my intent early on per se to write comics. I just really liked comics and that's why I was writing about comics. But the, what, six plus years I spent just writing about comics before starting to write a comic were very valuable in learning how to do and, you know, like the industry. Uh-oh, we lost Adrian. Where'd she go? She'll, she'll um, be back. Uh, but learning how to do it and learning how to, um, you know, like, inter and what the industry, so somewhat how it was set up. You still need to learn different things when you're a pro writer or a creator. But it was great. So I, I like to sit and listen to people talk about what they've created and how and how they work with people. And so I, I'll do a lot of those panels, as well as, of course, the big panels for the shows that I like or the cartoons that I've been watching or whatever it is. So. Gotcha. Uh, so I guess I, maybe uh, Adrian had a slight te technical difficulty. Uh, she'll she'll be back uh, momentarily. Um, but in the meantime, um, while we're waiting for her to come back, and I'll ask her once once she's back on, is uh, for, let me see. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. All set. Um, so Adrian, perfect timing. Um, just hopping on to uh, the next, next question that I had. Uh, well, did you? Uh, I know you were commenting on it's been a while uh, since since you were you know looking back on that uh, first con and, and talking about that. But the next yeah. question that I had for each of you was: Now that we have a a virtual edition, you know, of this show, and we're talking about all these memories of of being able to do it in person, this is perhaps we're in a special category. I was to say having you guys is. is uh, unique because you guys are the first SDCC peeps edition episode, special edition episode where we are now within uh, uh, Comic-Con. We're in day two at this point. So yeah. have you guys already put together our itinerary? And if so, you know, what does your itinerary look like now? And perhaps what does it look like going, you know, forward for the rest of this week? Oof. Um, yeah, I'm, I haven't really. I've looked at a couple things and I'm like, if I can catch it, I'll catch it. I've, I'm bad, like uh, since I'm not physically there, I'm like, I don't have to do anything. Like, cause my con is, my con, my con stuff is so weird. Usually like, like Emily was talking about going to panels and stuff. I make it to maybe one, two panels at convention now, just cause I am press, press room from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Like I can go, the entire convention without stepping on the convention floor if I feel like not stepping on the convention, which is sad. Like I I kind of don't even have the muscle memory of what it feels That's like the reality, though. on That's as it. an attendee anymore. 
it's just I, I went so like that that was my childhood I you know I've been in in the industry in some form since I was 15 so when I started working in the comic shop and go working the cons for the store and then on to working in the industry and covering the industry I'm like I I don't even know how fans have fun at the con it looks like it's all just waiting in line and 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 watching it on a jumbotron so this might be more fun now <laughs> yeah I mean, I'm, I'm, at me. <laughs> I'm gonna say the funny thing is that in in talking with other guests uh guest hosts that have been uh on these episodes is just thinking about like that that dynamic you know while it's not you're not going to have a lot of those spontaneous like live moments that are not really rehearsed that just happen because it's just it just is randomly happens there in the moment programming wise it'll be interesting because as you said, you're not you're not forced to actually choose as you normally would if you were there in person. Where Comic Con, I feel purposefully, and I understand it, they purposefully uh, uh, place various panels for various fandoms in conflict with each other just to provide everyone an equal opportunity to go to a given panel. So that way it's not like impossible to right. potentially see something that you want to go to. Yeah. Um, but now that is not the case and you can check out the panel and then go back and say, oh, I like, I like you know, that particular, you know, uh, fandom. Let me check that one out too. Like I, you can actually do multiple, you know, multiple panels within yeah. a day without oh. really having to choose. Adrian, Adrian was saying like you know he's not sure how like an attendee does the thing I I think pretty much every year I've done comic-con it's turned out differently just based on what I'm doing so like one year I remember I did so many press rooms and interviews I, I poor Adrian had to run back to the hotel at some point to get a new battery for my uh, camera and my like a new uh, card for my laptop or something like the storage had run out, the batteries had run out, everything had run out because I was in five or six press rooms in one day. I get it. I never left <laughs> I've the been there. or whatever, you know, like I never left. And and the other days I was doing reasonably large amounts of stuff panel like interview wise as well. And then the next year I went, nope. And I think that was, it was definitely the year I went to all the parties because I was like, I'm going to do something different this year. But it might have also been that year we were in that hotel where we slept in and stuff like that. <laughs> because the year before I had done all the like, get up early, get to the thing, do all the interviews, you're scheduled back to back. And it was, it was, it was too much for me. It was a lot. Yeah. I, I've, know, I've been there. This industry, sometimes I profit a little bit from it, but I wasn't getting paid enough, so to speak, to get up and go to all these things and do all the things. I love the stuff so i'm a little bit like doug in uh up where i look at what's going on and i decide what to do based on squirrel like <laughs> I, I am like this looks fun so like this um you were asking how we prepared for it i'm full-time working from home as an attorney right now so i have taken off thursday and friday today and tomorrow to go to comic-con but also recognizing that i'm also going to be doing some lying in the hammock and cleaning my house and taking care of my hamster and all the things that I would usually be doing on the weekend, you know, like I have chores that I'm doing. So um, I haven't, like Adrian said, I haven't looked at the schedule in detail, but I have some friends who have looked at some things and I said, and I extend this invitation, of course, to you guys as well. I was like, well, we could watch a couple of panels at the same time. And he was already doing that with some friends. I was like, that's a good idea. Let's, we could do that too. Yeah. So he sent me his thoughts on like stuff he doesn't want to miss. And I was like, Ooh, I definitely want to see the Nathan Fillion thing and the new mutants thing sounds cool. So I've already picked out like a couple things. And then this morning Comic-Con actually sent an email that lists off all the places to look for the different activations and the different parts of Comic-Con and all that stuff. And they put it on their website. So I'm planning after this call and after finishing up some stuff that's due for the Underfoot Volume 2, because that's in progress right now. And <laughs> this is time. that's the other thing. We're, we're in crunch time for a bunch of the little bits of the book that are that are due to the editor like now, you know, so they can go to the design team. So I have been doing Underfoot like I was up super late one night just doing the stuff, you know, writing pages of things. Um, 
So I'm gonna go to the website and I'm gonna list out some things. And also I just am like, I'm looking forward to the idea that I could maybe watch the panels on the big screen TV from the couch because they're being done through yeah. YouTube. And so theoretically that'll work out. I haven't tried it yet, but hopefully. So I'm like, I can sit on my couch, felt little creatures out of wool and needles because I'm doing needle felting now, which is a, a thing I just discovered, which is great because you just stab wool until it turns into cute animals. Perfect for this time. Um, very aggressive. <laughs> so I'm like, I can sit there and do crafts or eat my lunch or whatever in the comfort of home and watch the panel um, and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm doing stuff like this where I'm getting together with friends as we would at the con. And um, I'm also, as, as you guys know, because we have something planned for uh, tomorrow as well. And uh, speaking of parties, <laughs> and also I'm just looking forward to, you know, seeing what there is, but even though it's not Comic-Con where, where we usually would go, I'm already overwhelmed by all the options. So I'm like, but I can take a nap in my hammock if I want to. It's yeah. crazy. So that's kind of my plan. Is I'm looking forward to seeing the unedited panels when the moderators are allowed to release them. Because oh. like what they're, what they're doing is like the 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 cons getting like a version like because half the panels have been taped already, right? And so they like I know because my dad's on one, <laughs> and so like so like as soon as it's live on the uh, con site, like the moderators can then put like whatever version of it they want out. So I want to see like the Snyder cut of some of these panels. Oh, yeah. well, what's the one your dad's on? Tell everybody so we know. Yeah, oh, please. it's um the. Well, the panel on a uh, uh, for Denny O'Neill. Uh, oh the yeah, yeah. panel we'll for have Denny. To bring a panel for him, and of course Mike should be on it. So yeah. I will definitely. When Mike's on it. Time. Levitz is on it. I don't know when it is. Okay. <laughs> I, want to I should. Panel, like you're supposed to do, but that's cool. Yeah. And I'm a horrible daughter. No, no, no. You're great. And and the thing that one I'm of the editor. things that I miss about the con is since the Underfoot came out, I like to you know, talk to people about it at the convention and people come and, and buy it or are fans of it. And that's really exciting. And we're working on the second book and it's coming out in April next year. And the cover looks great. And the story is amazingly fun for us to write. I hope it's fun to read as well. Um, and the art is amazing because Michelle, our artist, Michelle Wen is still doing the art and she's amazing and everything is coming together beautifully. And I can't like do anything about it yet. I mean, we will talk about it coming down the line. But I was thinking, I was like, what can I do to, to do that part of my life at virtual Comic-Con? So I was thinking of trying to do like a Twitter thread at some point where I talk about writing the stuff or creating the book um, without spoilers. Um, I was going to say to plug say, that. Go ahead. Yeah. That, sorry, Brandon, what? No, I was going to say to plug that what you're talking about really fast. Um, we did have two uh, folks that I, I consider a part of, you know, SDCC peeps um for some uh in a couple of episodes ago so i recommend you guys check that out sean forney mr zoller uh tom zoller, yep. <laughs> tom, zoller. Um, <laughs> he was, <laughs> tom he was here um so yeah check that out because I, I, i'm fascinated by that or how that I love, how oh yeah i love the process out. that's always my favorite thing i love that's why i like interviewing creatives is because right. i want to like know what your process is that's why yeah. we Started pop culture, I'm particularly but. now with this and that dynamic that you would have at a con where you know you you get introduced to a whole new set of potential uh fans of your work just yeah, based on a conversation and, and interaction that you have with someone across the table and now yeah. you don't really have that component now yeah, that so it's i don't know what i'm gonna do but person. i just got thoughts on creating the book um because so it's called the underfoot the series is the underfoot the first one was the mighty deep the second one is going to be called into the sun so we we have now told you the the name of the next book and the release date yay Comic-Con news. <laughs> news. and um i'm co-writing it with ben fisher and then our artist is michelle wen and tom zoller is our letterer and it's coming out from oni press the lion forge oni press imprint um, next year. And yeah, that's the thing, Brandon, like, I want to share with people this stuff I'm working on, because people always ask you if you're if you're doing, you know, if you're if you're doing the creator end of things, they're like, Oh, how's your thing going? What are you working on? And it's like, what are you talking about? so I'm just I'm thinking, I don't know what I'm going to do. But at some point this weekend, I'm going to do some sort of thread, you know, basically. So that's the plan. 
Well, say we have a comment. Let me bring bring one. So, Bob, I guess you are watching. Hello, 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 hello. Hey, Bob. Miss you. Bob's my number two. Bob's my my head comics reviewer and 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 basically on pop culture. Everything run at Pop Culture Squad for me. Yeah. All righty, all righty. Um, so, um, with with all that being said, guys, uh, I guess the thing that I am fascinated to see is not not necessarily in terms of what my itinerary is, but I'm saying in terms of uh, the trend is now that that this is for better or for worse, this is what our San Diego Comic Con is for right now how it's going to shape uh, future uh, Comic Cons and, and how much of it's going to be still virtual based on on how the uh, how they feel the response was to uh, uh, this uh, to this edition. And another thing that's really interesting, too, that's uh, like I, I wouldn't want to deal with it because it's a logistical nightmare is um, if you're attracting more potential uh, uh, fans out there that want to attend this show, how is next year going to work? Because a lot of these tickets that people who couldn't go this year got transferred to next year. Mm -hmm. And there's only but so many uh, mm -hmm. passes or a cutoff point in terms of the amount of people that can go next year. Right. So are you kind of like putting like the uh, putting the treat in front of the you know fan and saying, oh, well, you can have this portion now, but Sorry, you can't have it next year. You can't well, go. But I mean, it's going to be virtual for you next year, too. <laughs> yeah, but we don't know what anything is going to look like next year. I could envision a world in which San Diego says we were able to do this to such an extent we could sell a second level ticket where you get the online experience. And that True. would be a monetary benefit for them and a benefit for anybody who can afford the ticket but can't afford all the rest of it. And I don't know if that would negatively affect in-person attendance to any extent, you know, based on people's experience this year, or if it would just help even out the people who want to go but can't go. But also, we don't know if next year, I mean, I'm hoping that we get a vaccine and things go well, and, and sure. by next year, we're back in normal person mode, you know, in terms of how we do these things. But it could be that if it's in person next year at all, it's socially distanced in some way that they have to cut in-person attendance to us to like you know a third of what it usually would be or some crazy thing like that i don't even know how that would work but i've i've given as a as a person who's organized and run conventions i also give some thought to how you could do that and there are ways in which they might be able to you know i haven't come up with all the solutions yet you know don't you know call me eventually not now um but <laughs> But I think there are ways that they could manage a socially distanced convention for some aspects, like the panels. Some, maybe. The but panels and stuff. How, it's the hundred thousand people in the street. Yeah, and the exhibit halls and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, and like yeah, conventions that like the floor, the floor, the floor. or buy a, a purse or a corset or a what you know. These are the things I buy at Comic Con. Yeah, how I, do you I, do that? I, how do you stop? Or I was going to say, this might be a solution, maybe kind of kind of like what you guys are uh, saying now to jump off of that is doing a leveled ticket, perhaps for the uh, the outdoor programming. So something like that, where uh, well, like I mean, part. yeah, so like, I mean, it, let's be honest, they you, you can still enjoy Comic-Con without physically having to go into the convention center. For those of you that have never attended. Um, you can still enjoy what it has to offer. Honestly, the ticket only uh, allows you to get into the convention hall itself. And potentially it, it provides some other perks as well, like with some of the restaurants and some of the places that are in downtown Gaslamp and the surrounding areas. But um, you can still go, you can still go and enjoy aspects of the show. So maybe they'll um, based on what they already have with their outdoor programming, they'll extend it even further if is that yeah. if that's even possible and try a, to accommodate there's, additional yeah, like there's, the, there's the activations, there's the Petco Park slash other like main areas. At one point there was Nerd HQ, and these things were not all run by Comic Con. And 
Yeah, I mean, like, so there there could be a way, you're right, Brandon, where there could be like, well, you can get a ticket for one of these things. You know, you can try to get the main ticket. If you can't get the main ticket, you can also try to get this other ticket. But you can't, maybe you can't have both. I don't know. Like, that would be weird, though, because then Or remember the year when they started limiting where you, your ability to cross the street unless you had a badge? Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that or, like, your badges gets you into Gaslamp. Like, yeah. they limit the outsider I mean, so that it becomes a, a safer space for the attendees. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think yeah. there are systems they can work out, but they're not going to be popular at first, if at no. all. And they're going to be, logistically, they're really going to have to think about it. And so, I mean, they have the whole next year to think about not it. Not jealous of the first one who has to figure it out. Not jealous at all. No. <laughs> uh, but with, with that being said, guys, um, can you, and this is going to be really hard, I'm going to, I'm going to cap it off with this, is tell tell our viewers out there with all the, the shows that, that you've had an opportunity, all the editions of Comic-Con that you've gone to, what is your favorite Comic-Con memory? Ooh. Why did you give memories, me memories, it? memories, plural. Memories. Well, obviously it was meeting you, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of it is friends. Yeah. I mean, yes, the friends we made along the way. That's the true meaning of the good place of San Diego Comic Con is the friends we made along the way. But honestly, Brandon, you and I usually are living in the same town, but we Which met. is weird. Met at Comic Con. I was just about to say, yeah. We, I was having this conversation with another guest, and it was with uh, Jeff Mueller. Shout out to Jeff, uh, Mighty Jerd. Um, he, we were talking about, he's in Maryland. Um, and we were just like, just thinking back, like, gosh, like we should have very well met at some other event. Um, uh, but lo and behold, this was, uh, we had to travel all the way to the West coast to actually meet each other. There are people who live half an hour from me that I only see at San Diego. Like, you know, it's we talk crazy. on Facebook every day and I physically only see them face to face. Sometimes I run into them in the airport, like on the, like, Ooh, <laughs> that, we that's we the airport. Like, was it C2E2? Yeah, this past yeah, this year. This was the last con before all the lockdown stuff was we went to C2E2 this year, right before everything went crazy. And we ended up on the same plane out there and managed to finagle seats next to each other. Yeah. Well, the year after the year that um, we met Brandon, I sit down at the Harvey Awards and I look to my left and it's Brandon. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. that was the one. Yeah, that was the one because I got in because of. Uh, <laughs> I was like, we were like, we know each other. <laughs> yeah. No, I was. It was. I remember that one because uh, mutual friend um, Vivek uh, Tuari. Shout oh, out to Vivek. Yeah. Oh, I love Vivek. Um, yeah. So he was. I think he was a speaker. Uh, for that, he was a very uh, excited speaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, he loves comics. I love yeah. the fact he's so passionate and so yeah. nice. Um, but yeah, he was a speaker for that award show. And going back to what you were talking about, that whole idea of of knowing, you know, your network. That was how I was able to to get into because I didn't have a ticket. Like, but that's how I was able to get <laughs> yeah. in. So. I've never bought a ticket to the Harvey Awards in my life. <laughs> so. I haven't either. I've always been. <laughs> Part of the press people or someone's guest. Yeah. The first year, I was uh, I was uh, a guest, uh, Barry Kitson's guest, and sat with Stan Lee at the Harvey Awards, which was awesome because he was there getting his Lifetime Achievement Award, and I legit felt a little weird about it. But I was like, after he sat back down, I was like, Stan, can I see your award? And he showed me both sides of it, and he was like, Oh, look at that! You know, it was so nice. I miss Stan Lee. Um, but anyway. That's a different con, but yeah, that's it. You know, the thing is, I miss all the conventions. You know, I was supposed to be at Planet Comic Con in Kansas City. We were supposed to be at Awesome Con. Got moved and yep. made happen, but probably I don't know. I've crossed fingers. And like uh, San Diego, and now Dragon Con is going virtual, and all the things that we were supposed to be doing or maybe doing this year. I just, oh, it's so, like, and at some of these, at San Diego, I don't usually have a table with the book, but at other ones of these, I was supposed to have a table in Artist Alley so I could talk to fans and sell the book and tell them about the new book and all the things that I want to do. And another of them, I was moderating panels and doing stuff like that or going to be on programs. And, like, I miss the 
pro level creator involvement as much as I miss the attendee stuff. And I really miss my friends. Oh, I really miss my All righty, Bob. Well, <laughs> we'll get you in for free. <laughs> I just miss you guys. And I miss all the, like, even as much as I'm trying to do a few online things with friends this weekend, there will be some I won't get to see, which is like normal when I go, oh yeah, let's meet up. And then we can't, but I just miss people so much. And I miss as, as Brandon, I think you call it our tribe, our fam, you know, our con fam, Adrian calls it. Fam. Absolutely. Um, well guys, I'm going to, as I said, I'm going to cap it off there. Thank you guys. My con fam. Love you guys. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Um, can you tell before I let you go, tell folks where they can find uh, each of your work? Okay. Um, I published popculturesquad.com. So I'm, I don't write too much for it, but you can see what the people who I love think and write on it. And I, I curate it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. M? Oh, uh, so I'm at the Emily ESSC pretty much everywhere. Uh, Twitter. Facebook, Instagram. I've got a website that's really needs a lot of work, but it at least has information on where you can find the Underfoot, our graphic novel series, and more information about that, which is available everywhere. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, you know, Oni's website, everywhere. Um, and yeah, I, um, I, I write for, I've come and gone in the last couple of years because of writing the graphic novel, but I did write a, a, a long article for Adrian. <laughs> Uh, she said, I went to a BTS concert because BTS. And she was like, Do you want to write about your concert experience? And I said, Sure. And then I ended up writing a screed about who are BTS and why do we care and why are they amazing and all this that stuff. That gets hit almost every day still. Well, <laughs> BTS fandom is crazy. And I only started being a fan April of last year. So my, my fandom went. And I've done some stuff for Movers and Shakers. And I, I have a lot of older stuff on Comic Mix. And I'm probably going to come back to some of this soon. But you can find me on those things and my website and my my, my socials. <laughs> All right, so there you guys have it. Um, thank you so much for checking out this uh, special edition episode of SDCC Peeps. I'm your host, Brandon Troy. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, obviously, as always, as you're watching now. Um, but you also can find us on Twitter at Move and Shake UNLTD or Instagram, Mover Shakers Unlimited. You can find me, at Brandon Troy ENT on Twitter and Brandon Troy underscore ENT on Instagram. So uh, as I said, this is day two of uh, San Diego Comic-Con, our virtual edition, Comic-Con at home. Uh, I will be doing minutes for some of the panels that that uh, I'll be checking out, even though I know a lot of you guys will be doing the same. Uh, additionally, we will have some more special edition episodes, so be on the lookout for those. We have two more today, so keep an eye out for them. Um, but other than that, thanks again so much, guys, for watching. Love you guys over there. Um, thank you for having there. us. Yeah, thank, thank you for having us. us. Um, be safe out there and see you soon. Bye. Thank you.